You're watching the News Channel 15 Highlight Zone with Glenn Marini. Sports coverage you can count on with the Highlight Zone starts now. Battle of Bishops is always the game that you look forward to. I'd rather beat them or any other team in the city. You know, we want to beat everybody, but you especially want to beat Bishop Pointer. Every game that we've played, no matter who it is and when it occurs, is the biggest game of our life. We won this game. We won it. We're glad we got them first game. Well, change is the name of the game as we kick off the 2015 football season right here on the Highlight Zone. Fans who used to wonder how Homestead and Carroll would fare in the SAC, they get their wish. Meanwhile, the newly formed Northeast 8 means uh, Leo and Huntington North are going to be tested. But the more things change, the more they stay the same. Jessica Starbird kicks things off with an old-fashioned rivalry game. Jessica? The Battle of the Bishops historically has been played at the end of the season. Oftentimes, it had a huge impact on who would win the SAC's victory belt. That's the case last year when a 41-22 Lures win over Dwanger in Week 9, earning the Knights a share of the conference title. The rivalry getting renewed this time in Week 1 at your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Battle of the Bishops, everybody excited over at Lures Field. The Saints feeling like they need this emotional win, but this is not going to be the way to start right here. No, is Nesky to Corey Griggs on fourth and 14. That will give your first touchdown of the day. Picking this up in the second quarter, cheerleaders getting in their first push -up of the day. Blake Bichelny trying to even things up, but instead he finds Austin Mack in the end. So quite an interception there for the Nona wide receiver on Ohio State commit. Out into halftime we go with Lures with a 7-zip lead. Now the Saints fans, they have some spirit here, but this might knock the wind out of their sails. It's the kickoff of the second half, and the ball lands in Mack's hands. Never a good thing for opposing teams as he finds a gap, and he takes off, completely outrunning the Dwanger defense as he makes his way into the end zone for his first touchdown of the season, the first of many and the first of two in this game. Dwanger will score in the third quarter. It's Pachelny all the way down to Zach Norton in the corner of the end zone. He slides across. That will be a successful two-point conversion. Will make conversion will make it a 14-8 game. But still, Bloomer scores, and then they throw a little wildcat in here. It's Mack again as he runs his way into the end zone as Bishop Dwanger wins this one with the final score, 28-15. So much with any rivalry, uh, the game seemed to be close. When obviously you got a team that's better, but you know I think we just we just uh, took it took us a while to get going. But when we got going, obviously you know the, the best team showed. Obviously we love playing these guys. It was a very competitive game, uh, very hard nosed, very hard fought. Uh, super proud of my guys. We uh, we pulled through in the end. And uh, I mean the Rangers always fundamentally sound, very tough team. And. I'm glad we got the win. It's the best feeling in the world beating them, and uh, I have nothing but respect for them. Uh, to beat them um, in our home field, uh, you know, for these seniors, it's a special night. For you next week while Lures is at Snyder. Glenn, back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Jessica. Homestead getting its first taste of the Summit Athletic Conference. Sparty's opening up against Concordia. Second quarter, Landon Durnell, the short punch in. 28-14 to 14 Spartans right there, but Concordia... Right back, Daniel Sparks. He's a lacrosse star, folks. He goes all across the field, takes it in for the touchdown. It's 28 to 21 at that point. But you know what? Homestead not done. Late second quarter to Kazai to Austin Kreider. We can't get you any closer to the game than that. Kreider with the touchdown, AK 83, the score. 35-21 Homestead at half. Early third, though, Sparks marches him down. QB keeper makes it a 35-28 ball game. But in the fourth, it's Kazai to Kreider again. Kazai the junior, 199 yards passing, three touches. Homestead holds off to beat the Cadets in their SAC debut, 49-33. First game of the season win means a lot. It gives us a lot of confidence, um, especially coming in the SAC. Uh, first game wins, a uh, big thing. You know, it means a lot, you know, because we were just ready the whole offseason to come in and just be ready for the SAC. You know, Concordia is a good first game test, and uh, they gave us all they got, and you know, we played sloppy both sides of the ball, but we got it done. That's the name of the game. Hopes that at Northside next week, Concordia hosting Dwanger. As for the SAC's other newcomer, Carroll making the short drive to Spooler Stadium to take on Northrop. First quarter, Northrop humming Garrett Shenley to Mike Snyder. 
first down, but uh, that drive would stall after a blocked punt. Aiden Smith, we know he's got the brains. He's going to play his college football at Northwestern. Apparently, he's got the brawn as well. The quick change of direction, and folks, that's the longest nine-yard touchdown run you're ever going to see. Smith into the end zone to make it seven. Zip Carroll, and the Chargers weren't done. Watch this. Jake Ostrowski, great interception there. Next play, it's Carroll again. Nick Novotny up the middle and gone. Great moves from Novotny. A rushing touchdown for him later. You're going to see Blake Schumacher coming off a stellar junior season. This kid is a big-time player. Pick six for Carroll. Chargers go on to win this one 48-14. So Carroll and Homestead both win their SAC opener. Sticking with the SAC, both Snyder and Wayne want to share the victory bell last season. Generals led by Michigan State recruit Austin Robertson first quarter. Snyder looking good. That was Dominic Scott with the rushing touchdown at seven zip Panthers. Later, you remember Robertson had four and a half sacks against this Snyder team in a playoff game last year. He gets the sack on Isaac Stiebling there, but Stiebling's going to play at Eastern, Uni Michi uh, Eastern Michigan University. You know he would respond to David Turner, part of that talented receiving core, 14 zip Snyder. Stiebling, 171 yards, couple of passing TDs and a rushing score. Later, Stiebling to Bryson Haft. He finds pay dirt as Snyder wins it, 49 to zero over the Generals. Final stop in the SAC, your totem pole game, 93rd meeting between North and South. We pick it up in the first quarter, Montreal Moore rumbling in as Northside on the board first, seven to zip. Southside's Dennis Johnson swinging it out to C.J. Morris, the former Concordia cadet, getting tricky to K.J. King. King would go all the way down to the two, and South would punch it in two plays later to knot it at seven. But simply too much Northside, specifically on offense, Aaron Nieves to Logan Caps. That's a combination SAC teams are going to have to watch out for. You're going to see more. Finish off the drive. Pounding his way through, and Northside wins the totem pole 49 to 13. Well, that is going to do it for the first work, first week, I should say, of the new look SAC. But we are just getting warmed up here on the Highlight Zone. We've got 11 games, 11 games still to get to. It means a trip to John Young Stadium for New Haven and Heritage. And the Bulldogs had themselves a day. We're going to head to Turtle Town for Busco and Lakeland. That was a good one. And Garrett at Prairie Heights. Yes, we made the trip to LaGrange County for that. All that and more. Up next in the zone.